Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Chairman, and, and uh, I couldn't agree with you more that, uh, that our, uh, the budget on this water infrastructure is a step backwards, and uh, I look forward to working with both the chair and, and uh, ranking on uh, water infrastructure that you both talked about in your openings. I think if there's going to be an infrastructure package that the President's talked about, I think water should be at the top of it and be, be uh, uh, a part of that. So I look forward to working with you there. And I want to thank uh, Mr. Mickelson. The Bureau's uh, FY17 uh, spending plan came out last week, as I understand it, and inc includes some good investments for New Mexico, including $4 million in additional funding for the Eastern New Mexico Water Utility Authority. This project has $50 million in shovel-ready work, it's just waiting on funds to put people to work, and I look forward to working with the Bureau to assure the continued robust, robust funding for this project. You may not be aware, but of the six rural water projects, Eastern New Mexico is the only one that supports our national security with 13% of the water from this project consumed by Cannon Air Force Base. Assuring that the project has robust funding is invaluable, not only to the communities of Clovis, Portales, and Melrose, but also to protect the multi-billion dollar investment of modernizing Canis and Air Force Base. So thank you for that. Lieutenant General uh, Seminite on, and Mr. Lamont want to thank you for continuing to prioritize reimbursements to entities in New Mexico through the Environmental Infrastructure Program. This year, the Corps' work provided $1.5 million to reimburse three entities, Rio Rancho, Bernalillo County, and the MRGCD. But our work is not over. $9 million is still outstanding to be paid to these partners, some of which has been waiting for reimbursement for over a decade. And I know $9 million may not sound like a lot, but for these entities like Rio Rancho, Bern Bernalillo County, and the MRGCD, I can assure you it is significant. Therefore, I hope you'll continue to work with me to prioritize these reimbursements so these communities can reinvest their money in new water and wastewater projects and get out of this cycle of borrowing against future funds. And to each of you, President Trump has been talking about sending Congress an infrastructure package since his days on the campaign trail, something in concept almost everyone supports, and which I just mentioned. When Many people think of infrastructure, they think of roads and bridges, but in rural America, we also know that dams, levees, rural water projects are invaluable infrastructure. In fact, it is estimated that the value of the Bureau of Reclamation's assets would be $94.5 billion to replace, and to replace all our federal water infrastructure would be over $350 billion. Maintenance of these critical assets is integral to our water security, fiscal security, and national security. We also know that for every federal dollar spent on water and wastewater infrastructure, and I mean real dollars, not a tax break, we generate $6.35 to the GDP. Therefore, I hope you will each push the White House to include robust funding in any infrastructure proposal for water infrastructure, and in particular, and rural areas which need it. And thank you, look forward to my round of questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to turn to another area on the BOR spend uh, plan that I'm very confused about. This uh, committee allocated $40 million in FY17 to drought in the American West, leaving it to the Department of Interior to direct the funding under the spend plan. Drought in the American West deserves real attention, funding, and creative solutions to address how we are going to do more with less water in the era of climate change. New Mexico feels the impacts of climate change and drought at almost twice the rate of other states, with every degree of warming elsewhere producing two degrees of warming in the desert southwest. Yet when you look at the list of investments the Bureau of Reclamation makes in drought, the state of New Mexico is conspicuously absent despite pressing need. There is a small amount of funding the state is eligible through for uh, upper, Red upper Colorado River operations, but this is really just drops in the bucket for this investment. Uh, for the people of New Mexico, this lack of investments is concerning. 
Mr. Mickelson, will you and the Bureau commit to working with me to ensure that drought funding for FY17 addresses the needs of New Mexicans? Yes, we will, Senator. And I was out there uh, just last week uh, meeting with some of your constituents and stakeholders and uh, look forward to working Thank with you, you on Thank that. Thank you very much, and we appreciate your visit. We also, uh, I understand that this administration has implemented a policy requiring all grants over $100,000 to be approved by the Secretary's office. Will you confirm that? That's true at this time, but we've not experienced any significant holdups on uh, any of the grant applications that we moved forward from uh, Bureau of Reclamation. I would note that uh, these are uh, performance-based grants, as I noted in my oral testimony, that are evaluated by uh, an independent panel that we put together. And uh, I would encourage uh, anybody from any state, but particularly New Mexico, because of the uh, arid nature of your state, to uh, please uh, make application for those, and they will be uh, acted on. Great, thank you. A, a, a big priority of mine has been to support a voluntary water leasing program on the Middle Rio Grande, something that is supported by the Middle Rio Grande Conservancy District, the Bureau, Audubon and other stakeholders in order to make this water system function more efficiently for all of the users. The Bureau is very supportive of allocating $2 million of its FY17 operating money to this critical program to lease water with this funding to restore system function. Will you commit today to support this request from the Albuquerque District and its partners and to work with us to make sure this innovative voluntary program is successful? Yeah. Senator, we uh, are working with all the parties uh, on that settlement, and we will we commit to continue to work with all the parties. We want to be able to move that settlement forward, as you've noted, with those voluntary transfers of pre-1907 uh, water rights at this time. And uh, yes, we we are moving forward on that. Thank you, and and um, Mr. Lamont and and uh, General. Uh, Seminite, this, uh, this year the federal government in partnership with the New Mexico Border Authority broke ground on expanding and renovating the port of entry in Columbus, New Mexico. Uh, the federal government is investing $86 million to modernize this facility to make sure Customs and Border Patrol has the necessary facilities to fulfill its mission of keeping America's borders safe and secure while facilitating significant increases in the number of daily crossings due to increased commercial and agricultural trade and private vehicle and pedestrian traffic. Unfortunately, the Columbus Port of Entry has been subject to reoccurring flooding over the years. And so, the, the, um, as I understand it, the Albuquerque District Office submitted this project as its top priority for fiscal year 17 work plan. And the NEPA is complete, yet the project did not receive any funding to build the berms. Will you commit to work with me in this budget cycle to make sure we're not leaving an $86 million federal investment in our national security infrastructure unprotected from flooding in the village of Columbus, New Mexico? Senator, we're certainly aware of that. Uh, I need to get into the details as far as why that didn't uh, have more justification in the budget. I'll work with Mr. Lamont to be able to understand what that requirement was. But as far as we know, uh, I, I don't have exact details right now to be able to give you a better answer. Yeah, well, this, this was the Albuquerque District's number one request. You yes, understand sir. understand that. Okay. Of course, what we do is we use this as a, you know, a national list. And then although there might be a number one priority in one of my 43 districts, it might not necessarily rack and stack as a national priority. So I, we certainly will continue to follow up and do everything we can to try to make sure that it has all the justification to be able to compete well for funding. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.